because it's hard to like eSports composition. Yes, you have the TF and the Talia who are, are decent at keeping threats at bay, but I feel like there's just so much overwhelming engaged potential for the side of Honwai Peaceful. I think for T1, lane 1v1 just really putting him in an uncomfortable spot right now. Oh, Carrier making his way in as well. Speaking of uh, uncomfortable spots, that's where Zekker is as well in this first blood as Ona comes Abilities on. to use. Well, now you can see you've got Delight moving on over to help Peanut out with this dragon. First one is going to be a mountain here. We'll see exactly what soul we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Zayas throwing some red cards out. Doran pretty happy with the fact that he's hit level six as Zayas has hit level four. So the control that you're going to get with a Twisted Fate in this matchup, not really there here. It's gone completely. And he does have his ghost back, of course, now, so can you know relatively safely get out of any engage attempt that Doran has. But that is going to be successful. The thing is, he has no idea that could be overlooking potentially yeah. for a dive. Delight is a pretty good bodyguard, but it's four versus two here towards the bottom side of the map. There it is! The sling does come back, The Viper will survive! And the turret is Zekka. so angry, Zekka is going to move in, he finds the ulti onto Faker, who does survive the engagement! Zekka still just trying to protect his bottom lane, it's working out so far, as he unbinds the soul, finds the double knockup, Seismic Shock goes wide! And T1 will not find a kill down here. Beautiful defense from... Oh, oh they get the kill on a Faker! Beautiful defender as well. The way that you would counter it is by, uh, okay, I'll hold that thought as Cease and Assist does come in. Seismic shove as well, the full combo, but from over the wall, there's Viper. Delight survived for way too long, but now Carrier has dove on top of Viper. He's trying to avoid the burst fires, as now the wall is going to come in, and T1, they single out. Oh, way. Yeah, Carrier is going to get stunned up here. Delight just playing Bouncer. We'll try and get Ona out of here. They aren't not going to be able to find it. And Twisted Fate, you're dealing with Talia. True, true. And there, there are a lot of things that can break it, as you mentioned, but it's going to be quite useful if you end up getting caught by one of those stray abilities as they are going to be fishing for you. Uh, and, and Zeri, deceptively quite strong in early game team fights, as we've discussed quite a bit. That's why Zeri moment's kind of a meme as it happens. You have to catch the Zeri, you have to pick off Goom, and if you fail to do so, you will lose it. Carrier not really finding too much, and now it does put his uh, ultimate on cooldown. You can see T1 are priced into forcing these. I'm like eSports though. They just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Of course, Magnus Storm's pretty good, but so is this. The season and assist comes in and Faker and Ona just showing Zekka that this combination of Talia and uh, and the Vi is not to be trifled with. And you know, that's part of the issue as well. Hot Life Esports have two carries in their composition. If you target one of them like that, if you do that to Zekka in the lead up to or just at the start of a team fight, suddenly you're dealing with three tanks and a Varus, and it isn't that on here Varus. So the ability to have that sort of sustained damage in a fight isn't there. So Zekka shows you the priority when it is a Chemtech Soul. Five members of Hot Life Esports group up. T1 don't even care. Yeah. So just look to giving an edge of the T1. Homelike Esports are on the objective. Yeah, started this one up. Carrier on a flank angle. We know that the wall can always come in, and there it is for Faker. He is not going to ride it through. He's just going to try and disrupt us. There is the Destiny to light off on the side, but there is the engage from Carrier. The seismic shove, and Viper is going to be wiped out. Sorry, Zeka has already gone down. The Drake is going to be secured, but that is sold for maybe just a team fight loss as Faker will for Barrett. Yeah, and you know, Peanut is still up and available, does have Flash, does have Smite, TP's available for Zekka and Doran, but the Baron is going down so fast. It is, Peanut should be able to make it into the pit, but this is going to be a difficult 50-50 to win. He flashes forward and they just turn on him immediately, taken down before the Baron's in range, that's going to be the secure, and T1 just... The problems in the composition here for Hanwha Life, you know, even with the, the setup they have, is Doran is a huge brick wall. T1 with the Baron. He should be able to get even more of these items. Seismic Shell going to be picked up once again as Faker finds yet another one. That's a good Glacial Prism, though, onto Zayas. He's going to have to get out of there. As the Unbound Soul gets Zekka back to safety as well, but now the re-engage. Delight looks for it, but he's just dead before he can do anything. And so T1 with five men strong, still with that Baron for another minute. And there, they've already gotten rid of the horse. There's just not enough sustained damage in this composition for Hanwha, even with the re-engage. As you're looking at Poke Forest, you're looking at Ione, there's no mage here that can just layer damage upon damage upon damage. There's no real AD carry, not traditionally anyways here for Viper. He's got to poke his way oh. through. Yeah, Seismic Shove is going to connect onto Doran as he teleports in. That is not the warm welcome that he was wanting as he looks to try and help out his teammates. Looks to try and get out of there. Gumi Yushi taking matters into his own hands. The tar it's locked in, you know, that's what yeah. you, you yeah. assume it's going to be. And now... Oh, Ona possibly with a bit of a face check here. Will be oh. taken out! Two on Dragon and have Doran hold the angle here. Now he's going to have to wrap around. Yeah. 
No 50-50 with no smite. Exactly, let's see what T1 can do. They're gonna have to try and find this to avoid losing the Elder. There's a seismic shove, and they are going to even out the numbers. There's no Zorin. Okay, survives for a very long time, but then does go down. There's the Elder now, as they have the executed second finds him, and a three-max shove from Faker is massive. And it's a double for Faker. They'll take a double as well for Gumiushi, and it's now only Viper left with this Dragon buff. And I don't think they care. Faker's just gonna throw some rocks at him, and that and even Elder isn't enough. T1, they lose the dragon. It seems like it's going to be doomed, but they handle the fight. They manage to lock them down. The health on Guma was so close to the execute threshold, but not quite there. And Viper just cannot do enough. Viper can't do enough. He doesn't have the time. He's playing the Daldi Bars here. And even with the miracle of owner just stepping forward there and getting caught on the life can... Yeah, it's already gone. There's easy... A lot of these champions for T1 can escape over the wall, as you can see. This will be his seventh. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Looking for that opportunity. Gets into the back line. They dive on top of Viper. He's able to get himself out. Now 1v1 and he finds it against Zayas, the ulti. And Viper's still alive! alive. He finds the double kill. Oh, is going to be the next to go down into the GA. Is now Doran is just playing bodyguard. And T1, they couldn't do it! They killed him so many times Owner that again. time they weren't able to get there. Owner again is, is, is picked here before the Elder, and it's a really nice fight here for Hanwha Life, but they get a second miracle. They get a second lease on life here. How many do they need? I mean, we already wrote the obituary. <laughs> yeah. We were memeing about Karia and stuff. We were talking about Gumasari. I mean, they... I was ready for game two. They threw so much at Viper. I think they just expected him to die, and I'm going to be honest, I did too. Me too. Games was what we talked about in the draft, and I think was going to be relevant in this game because T1 had a 10,000 gold lead, but now the tables have turned and hot. Inhibitor oh, Towers, if they can thin out the wave, you know, they have Talia, they have the, the W from Zeri to help out. Not something that we've had to talk about really either, as Hummel Life will now move towards this inner turret. They are just splitting. We are, we are getting back to even territory as the Weaver's Wall is going to be just elected into. Faker not going to be able to convince them not to break open the bases. Like you say, it could be a trade of Inhibitor Turrets, but Hummel Life Eastwards, it doesn't look like they're stopping as this Elder is still ticking down. Another five seconds on that oh, one. They find the engagement and they blow up Faker into the back line goes Curry. He tries to find that quickness, but he's permanently frosted and taken down. The deletion on two members, is that enough for the end of the game? I don't think so. As Hummel Life Esports, they don't think so either. Yeah, so many cooldowns been there. They have to respect the Zeri. Guma's still such a threat with Flash available, with GA available. They will actually look to reset the back of this. Doran's going to TP in. They want to look for the end They want to end. They want to end. They don't want to deal with that Weaver's Wall anymore. Or rather, the flip. Oh, no! they find the engagement! Able to get out of there, though, is Zayas. He did have that flash available. As there's the teleport back in. Owner is going to be CC'd as well. As he's going in, but he's by himself. T1 are just running in one after the other. The destiny is going to be popped, but I think their destiny is one dead Nexus and 0-1 in the series. Humble Life Esports were down 11,000 gold, and they will kill the Nexus here in game one. You know what? I think I'll take five of these, please. Yes, please. <laughs> they take it in the end. Early game, the lane swap puts Zayas out of the